This is Andrew Smiley, Executive Director of TreeFolks. I'm proud to say that this video is brought to you by the Central Texas Regional Mobility Authority, delivering innovative multimodal transportation solutions by engaging the communities we serve and protecting the environment we all share. To learn more, please visit mobilityauthority.com. Keep Austin Booty Day officially here in the city of Austin. That's right, we have our own day. I really appreciate you coming out today. I'm going to be planting a five gallon Monterey oak tree. And I just want to talk a little bit more about Keep Austin Booty Day. It's a new initiative that three folks is doing to fight climate change and chemical loss here in the Austin area. So we're going to be planting one tree as one act to do this day. So we're looking forward to it. If you want to learn more about it, Go to treefolks.org and you'll see it right on our front page. We are also celebrating the, Keep, the Roots and Wings Festival. So today, I believe it's a two week long event where folks can get involved with nature. If you check out uh, the Roots and Wings, excuse me, you can learn more about it. Uh, we're really excited to do it and thank you for Roots and Wings for putting this together. Right now we're at the Friends Meeting House of Austin, and I really appreciate them having us out and we're going to be showing y'all how to plant a tree. So, before we get started, I just want to take one moment to think about the earth, our lives, where we're at, what it's taken to get here, and where we might go in the future. And really, I just feel gratitude for everything and everyone. The soil itself that has been built up over millennia. And I just want to do the best for you that I can. And I want to empower you to do the same. So let's plant this tree. Let's get going. So I got a five gallon Monterey oak tree here. <laughs> it is not native to the area, but it's south of here, it's Monterey, Mexico. But the neat thing about it is that as the climate is changing, I guess kind of neat thing, as our climate is adjusting, these trees are going to become more and more suited for our area. And so we're, what we're doing is actually called assisted migration. That's just a fancy way of saying the trees can't move that fast on their own, so we're doing it for them. So it's very similar to a live oak tree. Keeps its leaves most of the year. So it's a beautiful planter once it gets established. It's quite a large tree. It's going to be about 50 to 75 feet tall once it's full grown. Right now, all I'm doing is I want to dig about twice as wide, maybe three times as wide as the pot itself. Just a general rule of thumb. You don't want to go deeper than the pot itself. Because it'll bury the root flare. And I'll talk more about the root flare once we get to that point. You can see here we're located by a creek side. So the soil is actually pretty nice here. Years and years of flooding have left deposits. Your soil at home may not be this nice. You can see that I brought a rock bar and a hard hat. That was just in case. I think so it seems like it's going to be doable. Soil. After you plant the tree, you still want to use the native soil. Whatever you dug out of the hole is what you want to put back in the hole because the tree's got to live with it. It's going to be there for a long 
Check how deep that is. What I'm going to do, little video test the cost. This is to figure out what the actual ground bubble is. Pop the toil off the tree and cut off the tree. That's actually pretty good. What I'm looking for, as you can see, is this first. I'm looking for the root flare. Let me actually get my tool rod here. So I'm just looking for the first major root. This is not actually a what I call a major root. What happened was the the guys who are growing the trees, or the girls who are growing the tree, they planted a little extra deep to account for soil loss over time. So what I want to do is reestablish that connection point between the soil and the tree. So I'm just going to be looking, see one here. While I'm here, so I'm going to go ahead and take this stake off. It's really important that you don't keep these ties on because they block the sap flow of the tree. So the tree is trying to send everything up. Really the, the wood of the tree is, is dead. The outside of the tree itself is the only part that's alive. And so if you cut off any of these points on the outside, you're going to be losing the, the water and nutrients from getting to the top. I can kill the tree pretty quickly. So, look at that. It took me 30 seconds to take that off. But it could prevent the tree from dying five years from down the road. So, easy stuff like that that could be avoided. So, go ahead and do that. Okay. Let's see here. Let me go a little bit wider on this hole just to make sure I got the right, right width on it. I think the hole is deep enough, but it's really not that hard to make it a little bit wider. That's what I'm going to do. there. 
here, some sort of space for the roots to find and to take hold and to move through. down the line you'll be able to shake the tree and knock it over. So really trying to avoid that. It's a good establishment. soil meets the trunk. This is an important point for air exchange. I want my tree to be able to breathe. I want the roots to be able to breathe. And of course I want everybody else to too, so that's why I'm planting trees. And so just a key point to note that you don't want any kind of soft base or anything. So I'm just going to take a look here and see if I can get I'm gonna be a little bit more gentle. It seems kind of tedious right now, but the thing is that it's just like taking off the stake. It's a little bit of work to avoid a, a lot of future trouble. So I'm just getting around. This looks pretty good. I'm also looking for, are there any roots growing in a circle? That's one of the big things. I'll definitely score this tree. I'll cut through. The Wildflower Center did a survey, or did an experiment, where they took a hatchet to the tree root ball. And the tree that they did that to grew much, much better than the one that they just planted straight like this. And again, it's all about, once these roots are established, they're just gonna get thicker and thicker and thicker. Just like the trunk, it's just gonna get thicker and thicker. It's not gonna move. It just stays in place and gets thicker. So that's why I'm looking for making sure there's nothing going around, no big things at the bottom. This is looking pretty good. Sometimes you may find a root like this one here that's growing across itself. Again, you can be pretty rough on these guys. That's for the best. Let's see anything. Let me go ahead and get this out of here. That's the old bamboo stake. Okay. So it looks like that's our first first major root right here. As you can see that the root flare officially is starting right there. Some kind of wound right here where it's sealed over. I think maybe this root it like grew over it. I don't know if you can see that. It's like right here. There's a little tiny mark there, which makes me think that it, this root was across it, and then it was able to like hop, leap over and expand past it. Kind of an hmm. interesting thing. So right now you're just exposing the root flare? Yeah, thank you. Again, just trying to get, get down to that official first root, because I want to make sure that I'm planting at ground level. Mm -hmm. And I'm just making sure that there's no kind of false detail or anything like that. And is that why you were brushing the yeah, top? I'm just trying to be gentle to expose. This area, the bark is pretty sensitive on the young trees. And so I'm just trying to take it, take it slow, make sure that I'm not doing any kind of 
real damage to the trunk. And that's also too why you want to avoid weed whacking next to a tree. If you mm. even cut like a finger width all the way around, like I mentioned that the sap flow is there, that can kill the tree right, right out. So I just don't want to do that. From what I'm seeing, it looks like the actual first root is starting here. There's kind of this strange piece in between. Let's get a little bit more here. Now I know it seems like a pretty tedious thing because I could just throw it in the ground, but I really want to make sure that it's getting in the right place. I have the right depth. The cool thing about it is because they're so adaptable at this young age. You know, um. Could you speak up a little bit? Because some people are saying they can't hear you very well. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. The nice thing about these trees is that because they're so young, they're pretty adaptable. And so that's one thing that's nice to note is that you can, again, be pretty rough on them, especially the root system, more so than the actual trunk itself. Okay, look at this. So this Okay. Yeah, I'm just again, there's a kind of a strange root that's growing. It looks like it's growing in between the tree. It's not that it's like coming out of the tree right here, it's actually like the tree has grown through it. Pretty interesting. So is that something that you will need to prune or are you just trying to expose it right now? I want to make sure that it's not the very first root. Make sure that it's not the first official stabilizer root. If you look on this tree over here, you can see that it's got a clearly defined buttress. Someone's defined stabilizer root. That's uh, what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the very first one of these on our tree. Okay. And someone just asked us, how do you identify the first root when you're planting this? Mm -hmm. So... Yeah. It'll be much more defined. I'll show you what it... So like anything like these small ones here, that's that's called an, an adventitious root. It's just grown through because the trunk was actually buried with soil. We're going to see a pretty well-defined curve when we actually get to that first root. And so I'm just making sure that I'm getting there. Might be a good idea maybe to tell them that it's okay to be a little yeah. rough with your tree, right? Yeah. It may seem like this is uh, abuse or, or really tough on the tree, but it's, it's what you gotta do to get to that first root. All this, Again, the Wildflower Center has done studies where they've actually taken a hatchet to this whole root ball. And as long as they didn't damage the trunk, it was actually much better for the tree long term. The reason being is because, again, you don't want to have any roots growing in a circle. Mm -hmm. And so right now what I'm doing is just trying to get to this first official root. There we go. Okay. And you're using hand pruners? I've got hand pruners and I've got a little brush here just to sweep away things. And is there anything people can use at home if they don't have hand pruners? I would imagine that you could do it with scissors as long as nothing is too, too heavy. Um, I do want to get a clean, a clean break on these, so that's why I use the pruners. If it's something ragged, it just exposes more surface area that could be potentially mm. a vector for disease or something along those lines. Excuse me. Okay. So again, this is a really strange case. But this root is not officially the first root. Even though it looks like it, because it keeps getting thicker down here, 
That's how I know that the first official route, I believe it's right under here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these. This one, and then there's another one, the same one on the other side. Now, people are often surprised how, how rough you are with these first, first roots. And it seems like it's damaging to the tree. But they're very malleable and adaptable. And I just, I can't stress enough how it's more important to be rough now and to get to this first. See how, I think you can probably see the best profile here. It looks like it's there, but then it starts to get thicker there. And so then officially, right here. That's the first root. Right. There, let's Yeah. So, again, I just want to, if you take anything away from this, you can be rough on the tree. <laughs> and this is the most tedious part, because yeah, once absolutely. you get it in there... Even the hole was nothing compared to actually getting this roots exposed. Okay. Yeah. Great. Okay, so now I've got down here to this official, see this kind of thicker one right there? Official first root. It's much bigger, you can't quite, it's under this pile right here, and it's right there. This is where it like official, there you go, can you see that? There you go. Okay. Well, there we go, we made it. <laughs> we got to the official first route. I don't know if you can tell, but the difference between this one and one of these is that it is a part of the trunk. I don't know how to explain it other than this is coming like at a 90 degree angle, whereas this is actually from the trunk itself. Like the trunk has become the root. Mm -hmm. I hope that makes I think that's another, a good description. Another, yeah, just another way to say it is that it is a piece of the tree versus this is just a, an outlier, a branch. It's almost like saying that this is the trunk, that's a branch, these are branches, and this is the actual trunk. And so why is it important to expose it? So the reason why it's important to expose it is because that is where the ground level needs to be. Okay. So officially, and I'm going to cut off these, some of these smaller ones around here. The reason why is that this is where air exchange happens, this point. Let me just take off. Okay. And so all these other ones, they just grew because the tree was buried. It was adaptation to an unideal circumstance. So it was just doing the best that it could. Okay. And it's not, it's a common thing for tree nurseries. So here we go again, the first official route. Took us a while to get there, but we're officially there. <laughs> but it's important to take the time because it then really your is. tree will be healthier in the end. Yes, absolutely. It, if it's buried, it'll lead to rot, disease. So many times you'll see at the base of a tree like fungus popping up left and right. It's because it was either planted too deep or it's been buried. That's why whenever you see people like mulching, we call it volcano mulching. The reason why that's negative is because it's cutting off this air flow, this point where it actually exchanges oxygen and carbon dioxide. The roots actually breathe oxygen, whereas the leaves are breathing carbon dioxide. So, yeah, so that's it. If this root was growing any more around, like it's about a, let's say that's 45 degree angle. If it was growing, let's say eight, 180 degrees, I would have to cut it off and then it would be kind of touchy. 
but because this is only going part way it'll get thicker and thicker but it won't actually cut off just like i talked about how weed whackers can cut off the flow of sap roots can do the same thing so if i had any roots that were growing in a circle it eventually as it gets thicker will cut off the flow of water and sap so thank you for bearing with me made it <laughs> now as we've been talking I've left my hose on low. And now this hole is actually pretty looking good. It's got a lot of water in there. And that's ideal. As I put the soil back in. And it's the same soil you just yeah, digged. So I'm not putting anything, anything special. No compost, no fertilizer. This compost and mulch can come after me. So right now, all I'm putting is milk in there. Is what it's technically called. So, to make it now, excuse me, I'm going to do a little bit of a couple of cuts along this edge here while I've got a chance. I'm going to do just a few cuts to make sure that any of those, like I mentioned, the roots are growing in a circle. It's going about 90 degrees. So again, just like up there, I don't want any roots growing in a circle. Same thing down here. I'm not being too harsh on the tree. It may again seem like I'm being rough on it, but it's going to be better long term. Cutting any of these roots that are growing in a circle because they'll just continue that way and the tree will lose its stability. Great. Got it settled. I need to get the orientation to where it's going away from the playground here. Great. Might be a good idea to say something about like right tree, right place. Right tree, right place, maybe. Yeah. I don't think they can hear me. I can hear you. Though. What I've decided to do. Can you speak up a little bit more? Yeah, You definitely don't want to be less than 20 feet from your house. So same thing where you definitely you want to be far enough away to where this tree can grow to its full size. And when you see something like this cottonwood in the background, there's giant trees here, but they have their chance to reach their full potential. I want this tree to be able to do the same thing, so I'm giving it plenty of space. And we call it the right tree, right place. So now the critical thing that I'm trying to avoid is air pockets. The reason why is that roots will not grow in air. So it's just a crazy thing where once they're exposed to too much oxygen, they can't bring any in. That's why you never see really much roots growing out of here. There may be one or two, but once they hit the air, and stop growing. And I definitely don't want that for my new roots down here. So I'm putting water in the soil, putting water in the hole, and I'm breaking up any clods. This is especially important if you have any kind of uh, clay soil, because I know you're going to have big chunks of ground when you, when you get done. So again, I've got water in a nice deep this first watering is the most important. Because once the soil settles, it's probably going to stay there. And so again, I just got a nice slow flow filled up this hole. And I'm just bringing back in the soil. 
This has got holes drilled in the bottom. Those holes are so that I can take the hose on high, I can fill it up, pretend this is on high, and once it's full, I just let it drain out and it will slowly seep into the soil. It'll get a nice even watering. And so that's what I'm trying to do here. And that's what I've done by leaving the hose on low. It's just been slowly trickling in and filling up these holes. So for two years, you gotta do this. It's a commitment. You can't just do it and let it go. It's not... It's, it's easy to plant a tree. It's hard to find the root flare, but it's easy to plant a tree. But caring for it, and just like we're trying to care for the earth, that's where the actual commitment is. So I'm going to smooth this out a little bit more, but that's basically it. I'd really recommend to lay down some, some mulch or compost to help protect the soil, it'll regulate moisture, it's got so many benefits. But that's basically it. I'm not going to do any kind of pruning on the tree. I'm going to wait for that for because the leaves are going to pull in as much sunlight as they can and grow the roots, but that's all, that's all extra stuff. Right now, this tree is planted. I've gotten out all the air pockets. And I think that's it. Before we sign off, I want to definitely give a big shout out to the Friends Meeting House of Austin. Thank you for having us out and letting us use this space to show everybody how to plant a tree. I want to thank the Roots and Wings Festival and the folks over at the City of Austin and all the partners who have put this event together. And I definitely want to thank you for tuning in and helping to keep Austin rooted.